Aside from food and friends, traveling is the best gift spearfishing has given me. I was 28 years old the first time I ever went diving outside of Hawaii. It was at Newport, Rhode Island, and that's the trip where I won the National Spearfishing Championships. After that, a whirlwind of traveling began, and I got to see the world. One thing I love about traveling is having to learn diving all over again. New ecosystems, new fish, and new diving techniques. Today, I'm taking Steve Ranella to the Bahamas to meet one of the most well-traveled friends I have, Cameron Kirkconnell. Cam is a guide who taught me a lot over the years. And together with his first mate, Brandon Albury, they're gonna teach us the ropes of diving the Bahamas. What are we actually like going for? The main focus for us today is gonna be looking for hogfish. Sweet. <laughs> I've never seen a hogfish really? in my life. Yeah. No, I just... me neither, man, but I want to real bad. These are such a unique fish too. Like I've never laid eyes on one. It's a type of wrasse. So they've got a, a really weird mouth that they've developed and you know, they they'll go down and you'll see them on the bottom like grabbing sand and kind of not even filtering it out, but kind of like shaking it out. And they're just out and about. Yeah. And are they run in they run in schools? Sometimes. The majority of the ones that we'll probably see today are going to be big like solo ones. Uh -huh. And the whole time you're keeping your eyes peeled for for uh, lobster antenna, antennae yeah. sticking out of rocks. And we'll see half a dozen different types of jacks here. You know, if they come by, like I was saying, like get down, just get down to them. Don't look at us and wait, like go. I need um, a pole spear tutorial because okay. these things look a little more complicated than what I'm used to. The pole spears have come light years, you know, since even since I've been spear fishing. What we're going to be using now is one with a slip tip. So what happens is that tip goes through them like that and toggles on the fish, and then you're going to the surface, obviously. When you're going to go to get a hold of him, you slide your hand down to control him like that, and then use your other hand to get him in the gills. And you put your hand in like that, and then when you're, when you're aiming, you're looking down your thumb, you know, like that to shoot and letting her rip. And when you let her rip, like, open your hand completely. Don't like... Yeah, don't throttle it. Don't throttle it, let it roll. Uh, you know what you were saying when we were first looking at these, I thought was interesting. I feel like I've made this mistake in my limited pole spearing experiences is uh, not giving it enough space to fully accelerate. Yeah. You're, you're gonna be right up in the hole. Like, you can put it like right against them. And if you do that, it's like me trying to punch her like this. Right. You don't have any... The, the ideal distance is about three feet. Okay. okay. Every, pretty much every fish that you can think that you can spearfish for, you can use this and get them. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of patience, learning to hunt better, and you know being at the right place at the right time. And so you would agree that like pole spearing is like the best foundation for spearfishing for sure. 100%. And, and that's what you grew up, started doing. And right? kind of the cycle of you know your your life in spearfishing is you start out with the most primitive gear, you go to bigger and better you know equipment, and then you circle all the way back and start doing this again. I like that we don't have to wear wetsuits. That's a first for me too. Yeah, water will be warm. We'll be up in holes. Like some of these holes, you're gonna have to commit to, you know? As soon as we jump in, we see a female hogfish. I dive down and this fish just stays still, making it as easy as it gets. Yet somehow, I completely miss. Steve responds immediately and goes after the fish, but he misses too. Like shit that you'd hit so easy with a gun is just hard to hit, man. But the hogfish went under a ledge, so I try again. And third time's a charm, we got her. <laughs> Cameraman Perrin grew up diving the Bahamas, so he teaches me a little bit about hogfish. A male or female? That's a female fish, and you can tell by the nose here. The males have a longer, like, stout here, and it's actually like sometimes like a darker brown. Got it. But that's a beautiful female fish. Sweet, man. That's gonna taste so good. Uh, it looks delicious. <laughs> man, that's good. 
it's no joke though. That, that takes a muscle for me to hold it. <laughs> and it's like so awkward for me to swim with. I have yeah. to get used to it. <laughs> then we spot a stud of a hogfish. And once again, this fish is making it beyond easy. And yet I managed to blow it again. That's a big hogfish. I just scratched his head. The hogfish darts under a ledge, but Steve is on it. Only to take a shot, miss again, and the hogfish escapes. These spears are just so much longer than what I'm used to, and for the life of me, I can't <laughs> aim it right. And now the whole crew is laughing at us. I shot right under him. Seriously? Because it's hard to get the angle. I, got I, remember, this I remember my first day. How, how do you show, show me how to put this goddamn thing back together? <laughs> we got a good old fashioned clusterfuck over here. But what we lack in technique, we make up for in persistence. And I'm looking under every ledge for that hog, determined to make my next shot count if I get the opportunity. Finally, I nail him. And he's much bigger than I realized. <laughs> Holy shit, Kimmy. Hold on, Kimmy, get him up into your hands. Kimmy, get him up into your hands. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's a real hogfish. That's what we're looking for. Holy shit. People go their whole lives in the Bahamas looking for that one right there. Oh my God, he gave, Holy he cow, gave that Kimmy. much to her already yeah, not huh? try. Huh? Okay. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. It's a real one. <laughs> yes. Good job. Holy moly. Every time I saw him, I'm just like, no, we need to get that one. Whew, and then that was a fight. Once I did shoot him, I had to go first. <laughs> oh, mission accomplished. That's a cool fish, Kim. That's a really cool fish. That thing sure fought too when I was trying to <laughs> parse it out. Oh yeah, man, he had that thing bent like a rod. <laughs> This cave's got a bunch of bait fish, like those little minnows or whatever, like we were talking about. Mm -hmm. There's usually a really deep hole there. I'm gonna go down and put the light in there. So the first thing I want you to do is just go look at them. Okay. Like this hole. Some of these holes open up and become their own little universes. <laughs> While other holes are so small, you need to figure out how to fit yourself and your spear in there just to get a better look. Cam finds a hole with a yellow fin grouper in it. He sets up his light in the hole so that we can see it and sends us down to assess the situation. That's a yellow fin grouper, which is one of the best eating, especially at that size. How are you gonna drag them out of there? I get them out. <laughs> With force. <laughs> Don't worry. With a lot of force. <laughs> to shoot them in the So you just gonna have to leave them in there. He's got to leave them in there for a minute, huh? They're gonna go nuts when you shoot them. No, no, like we're gonna pull them right out. Perfect headshot wide open. That doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. Sometimes these big opportunities. I'm not playing bad juju out there. Steve's got this, he's gonna take the drop. I'm gonna be here for support. Steve drops down and lines up and takes a solid shot. This is called a stone shot. He hit the grouper right in the brain and killed it immediately. So he's able to bring it right out. Textbook! <laughs> wow! You made that look way easier than I thought. <laughs> wow! Well, that's how you do it, I like, guess. You just stole that thing? Oh man, that was amazing. <laughs> Yellowfin grouper, buddy. It's funny because you're, you're, I don't want to say they're cornered because they have every right to leave, but they just, I mean, once you find them in those holes, man, it's kind of almost like your situation to mess up, you know? That was a great fish though, man. And these are such good eating fish. You see why they call them the elephant? I can. When I saw you shoot and it didn't become all crazy and <laughs> a ruckus, I'm like, damn it, he missed. <laughs> and uh, Plenty of reason to assume that's what happened. I like that straight edge on that tail. Yeah. It's unusual. 
Next up, we're switching our focus to lobsters. You're allowed to spear them here, and my goodness, they are huge. Nothing! Holy shit, man. That's incredible. That's a real one, too. <laughs> So that, that one's a male. See how long his legs are? You people usually aren't afraid of these things. They will get you. If you let them work your finger into their hand, into their mouth, they will crush you. Tried to grab him in the past and had horrible luck with it. So yeah, shooting is pretty nice. Put up a fight? <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't think of a lobster as putting up a fight for sure, man. Strong. This cave is brimming with lobsters and lionfish and chub. I actually have to wait for the fish to move in order to take my shot. That's fun. Target rich hole there. No kidding. <laughs> On this drop, I can hear Cam grunting at me, so I turn around and I can see a school of yellow jack approaching. These fish are great sashimi. I hit one, but it goes crazy as I'm trying to get it under control, and it ends up wrapping the cable around my fin. And as I'm trying to get my fin free, the fish slips from my grip and rips itself off the cable. Underwater yoga. Oh! It came off? Yeah! <laughs> oh, that hurt. That really hurt. <laughs> Steve drops to check a hole and it is filled with lobster, but he sees a grouper in it. But as he shoots the grouper, the biggest daddy of all lobsters evacuates the hole right into Cameron's hands. Steve's spear gets stuck and both Cam and Steve head to the surface. I head down to retrieve Steve's spear while Cam is filled with celebration. <laughs> Jeez, that's a big one. They're not afraid to attack you either. I'm able to get the spear with the fish still attached, but not without getting stung by a whole bunch of fire coral. Yeah! How you press your Good brush. teamwork. Is that you okay? the same one or the same one? Same one. Same, same. And that's the one I saw. Ooh, I, saw shot, I got some fire coral to oh, my Oh, you pulled it out. Leg. What's that other gun laying down there? Oh, that was mine. Ooh. Oh. You okay? Ooh, fire coral. Mm. Ow. And he turned and like just shot right in my face. Oh. It was more self-defense than anything else. That's a good one. That is not a bad way to end the day, Cam. <laughs> and it, I mean, that's like a lobster of a lifetime right there. And all this other stuff is to draw it right there into that black hole. And that's a crusher. So they'll crush like clams and shells and everything with that. It's so true that like the pole spear has to be the way to go here because there are so many options where you know you that that extra added challenge of frustration is like such part of the whole hunt. Oh, you'd, be, you'd be cleaning the house and done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it took me took me a minute to get the hang. I mean, not that I've gotten the hang of it, but it took me a minute to. Oh, I mean, you know, even start kind of being serious about shooting something. Well, I would say if the fish here didn't give second chances, I wouldn't have a single <laughs> fish today. Like you'd have the grouper, but I really wouldn't. Wow, what a day! This morning, we're heading back out, and this time, we're going for something that even we can't miss, conch. Cam found a spot in a shallow water inlet that's loaded with them. We're still in the ocean, but it sure feels like we're going up a river. Like, so I is just- a big mango. Yeah, oh, that's a kubera. Nice. So that's really? a baby kubera there. Interesting. Is he gonna hit that jig if I lay it out there or no? Probably not. Wow, this is amazing. Look at this. Oh wow, look at that's a proper one there. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, so Jay is like grab it. There's two good ones. Oh my god, they're huge. Oh, yeah. 
There's another third one there. Don't, don't let them get away. No, I'll keep an eye on them. Yeah. Two, three, four. I think I'm gonna dive bomb the first one. Five. I'm gonna pop in on a big five. I need you to stop. Down to him. Nailed him! I got him! Beautiful. This is like a fun Easter egg hunt, all while being pulled along by the current as I scan the bottom. I'm grabbing what I see, and Steve is throwing back the smaller ones. Camera says this is not a giant, and I can verify that in my limited conch experience. Oh, this is a big daddy right here. There's a good one. That was a quick and very productive session, and now we're focusing back on fish. You gonna look for big hogs? Is that what you're looking for first, or? Yep. Are you done with big hogs? Or no, dude, I'm not having it. No, no, no. I blew, I've blown all my opportunities, man. <laughs> I need another like chip shot to try to pull it together. So we'll, we'll do some big hogs. Um, I think that's the main like focus for where I'm thinking to go, and just do big drifts. Yeah, if I get another chance, I'm gonna aim. I'm gonna put the tip on. The whole deal, man. I want redemption on a yellow jet. <laughs> Big time. I'd love to have some sashimi. Fish. They look so delicious. But instead of finding a hog or yellow jack, Cam finds a black grouper in 60 feet of water and sends me down after it. And take all the time you need. The first chance is the best chance, okay? But as I approach the hole, the grip on my spear slips. The slip tip falls off, everyone's grunting at me. I try to put it back on, but the grouper escapes. So, could not take the shot. Grouper swam away. Give it, y'all stop Jack at the jaw and go, go get it. My God. <laughs> I try again and again, but the grouper only gets smarter and faster at fleeing. Cam's right, the first chance is the best, but when I finally give up on the grouper, a yellow jack swims underneath me and I get a first chance all over again. But boy does this fish fight. It rips the spear right out of my hands and when I finally get a hold of the spear, the fish swim circles around me, wrapping me up in my own cable. Sharks are coming in as I'm trying to get everything under control. Well, Cameron said it. He said, big yellow jack coming. Go, Kimmy, get your ass kicked. And um, I took, I take orders quite well, so. We take a break and Brandon, who's a born and raised Bohemian, teaches us how to clean a conch. He chisels a small hole at the top of the shell and cuts the muscle that holds the animal in place. It slides right out. It might look ugly, but it is briny, sweet, and delicious. Damn, Damn that's good. I could just eat this. Oh no, <laughs> just chew Without up. adding anything. I'm making a conch ceviche to enjoy at the end of the day. I'm adding a lot of lime juice and a ton of veggies. Let's try this conch salad. Look at that. 
Wow. Mm. What the fuck? Post dive snack all over again. Maybe with some cold beers and some fish in the cooler. We get back to diving and Steve takes a drop on a hogfish. It is truly amazing to see how far he's come as a free diver. He hits the hog, but she wraps around part of the reef under the ledge. He spends a lot of time fussing with it at depth before coming up. We all trade off, taking turns on trying to retrieve this fish. As the sharks come in, one person has to guard the others while they try and untangle the fish. Cam is successful, and Steve has his first hog. I find a hogfish in the sand, where it's much easier to bring it up smoothly. Steve takes a drop on another hog. He misses, but he's now able to put his slip tip back on, reload all in the same breath, and take a solid second shot. We are on a roll. Steve's dropping down on a male hogfish that he executes perfectly. It's as if our day couldn't get any better, except we get to finish it with some conch ceviche. Yeah, this is just from this last Look, drift. Steve went from zero to three. <laughs> Just like that. Look at this. This is ridiculous. I mean, coming from Hawaii, like, jeez. Yeah, it's not every day. No, we don't. We don't. We got it good. But I'm just saying, there's some big, beautiful fish. That's cool. That's so cool. That's good shit, Kimmy Warner. Good, huh? That was really good. You could really taste the sweetness of it. I just, I love being able to gather something from the ocean, make something on a boat, like throw it in a jar or something, throw it in the cooler, and then let it get better as you dive all day and then just eat it at the end of the day. It's so perfect. Here. Did that on purpose. You need to get your chip program on Jack better. Can okay, you? actually, my chip program Dude. was absolutely fine, and I said to everyone, there's no eating these damn chips until the ceviche that. is done at the end of the day, and then I came back to a bag full of crumbs and had to take it away. Yeah, look at this, man. I'm, I might have broke that. Look at this. The energy you use just holding that thing while holding your breath and swimming. It's so different than a gun. Like people with a gun, like you don't have to flex those muscles. Yeah. You know, or think about that big thing moving yeah. around. And every muscle you're flexing is burning oxygen. Totally. I feel like with a spear gun, it allows you almost like compartmentalize all the different things. Like, okay, now I'm just mm -hmm. gonna relax. And all I have to focus on is relaxing. Now I'm gonna make my drop smooth, and that's all I have to focus on. Now I'm gonna lay down, keep everything flat. You know, but it's like one thing at a time. Now I'm gonna hold my breath and let that fish come in or whatever your and strategy I, is. Now I'm gonna put that point back on again. Now, yeah, it's just like, I have no time to think. I have to load this, this thing's falling off and... Yeah, I got eight feet of something <laughs> over here. I got... <laughs> when do I load? Where does it need to be pointing? Yeah. You, can't, you can't move it fast either. Like, no. There's a lot to it, man. I like, but I do appreciate how I can see the progression in us being a little less awkward with mm -hmm. it, you know? Like, yeah, we're like, hold on a minute, I'm yeah. gonna get my pole spear and I'm gonna shoot you. Uh, everything Cameron's been telling me about me swimming with holding it like this makes a lot of sense. That's the way it should be, you know? If it's too easy, like it, it's too easy. Mm -hmm. There's a reason this, this sport's so addictive, it's like you can never be perfect at it, no matter how good you are. Oh, totally. Chip Out situation ain't getting better in there.
Well, it's our, our last day of diving and I mean, it's hard to even have a wish list right now because we achieved our goals of the trip already. But at the same time, I wouldn't mind shooting a big old grouper. Just putting it out there. We find a hole with a yellow fin grouper in it and Steve dives down to check it out, but he's skeptical. That, there's like a little hole and the, like you could put the butt end of the spear maybe, but fuck, you just can't get it angled. I think if you hold the, sh the spear on the roof of the cave and shoot, you got a shot. Yeah, well, just, yeah. you have a shot, take a shot. I mean, it doesn't matter who, here, I'll come down with you and, and check it out. Cameraman Perrin thinks it's possible, but after further investigation, he just can't get the right angle with the spear. So he tells Cam to grab the fish by hand. I think you could noodle him. Cam gives it a shot. Situation. I, I had him, but he wouldn't open his mouth. Okay, wait. It's that shark's down there fucking there. around. Timmy, there he is. Shoot him. He's I'm out. Fucking, Shoot him. I, I have to. He's out. <laughs> the grouper finally comes out of the hole only to get chased off and probably gobbled up by a shark who was watching the whole situation from a distance. That was wild. Dude. And after all of that commotion, a huge yellow jack swims up to check out the action. Steve spears it and it is a beast of a fish. He's able to let go of his spear and swim up because he has a float line attached. Just a giant one, Steve. Get him up, the sharks are gonna come. Where's the shot? Right in the head. Damn, that's, that's, a, a that's a really big one. That's a really that, big that shark missed a more reasonable opportunity by not just hanging around and waiting for that to happen. Yeah. Cam sees the biggest fish yet on this trip. A huge black grouper that he followed into a hole. He's able to set up a flashlight, but it's so far back in this cave that we can't figure out if we can get our bodies and a spear in through the opening. But I'm nominated <laughs> to try it. Because he's going to come out, out somehow. Okay. Okay. Good luck, girl. Okay. I need to squeeze until I'm ankle deep in this hole. And I can see why Cam says to spear it and get out. I wouldn't want a big grouper with a sharp spear in it to try and squeeze past me now. I feel confident in my shot. I think it's gonna work. <laughs> He's down there. Oh, damn. Before I know it, Steve is trying to get my fish out. And out it comes. We cannot let this fish go into another hole that we won't be able to retrieve him from. This is an incredible fish. I was just um, moaning and groaning about grouper hunting last night, just talking about how I don't even know if I really like it because it's so much anxiety of like maybe hurting a fish and leaving it in the hole or just having to enter something kind of blind and figure it out when you get there. And just the up and downs it can take of retrieving it. but. Um, after all that morning and groaning, I woke up this morning and I'm like, you're just being a wimp. And it's because you haven't succeeded yet. And all I really want is a big old grouper. This is one. This is the biggest one we've seen the whole trip. Your, your confidence in your game plan, it's like, it is so spot on, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and um, 
And I love how you told me you shoot him right here, you know, in, in this back half, and um, then get the heck out of there because it might just bust out of there. And that's what I did, and everything seemed fine. And next thing I knew, Steve was pulling it out, got it out of the hole. I was so stoked. And then when that thing took off, I just saw it drag you like. It drug you like, like 20 25 feet. feet. It was just so, so cool, dude. And like. What a fish. That was, yeah. Stand up, holding like. This fish is big, and I'm glad it took all of us to make it happen. It's easy to say that this trip is what dreams are made of. Steve, Brandon, and I clean fish and divvy it up to take home. But before this trip is done, I want to cook a feast. We're bringing our catch to Cam's friend Chester's house. He lives alone on this island and runs a restaurant out of his home. He's letting us use his kitchen to prepare our meal. His restaurant is called Flo's, named after his mom and his family has owned this island for over a century. Chester's grandma, who was born a slave, used to cook for the pirates, and that's how she made the money to buy the island. I'm putting Steve to work on the hogfish. I'm having him butterfly the fillets into thin pieces and season with salt and pepper. Sure you want like 50 of these things? 50? Well, I'm exaggerating, but you get the point. Good. Now I'm sauteing onions to go in a cranberry pesto aioli that I'm also having Steve make. Right, give me water. Do you think you might want a little more pesto? No. I, I'm not thinking we used to make it, but I'm not like the hugest. Pesto fan? If I had to give up pesto or mayo, I'd give up pesto. Yeah, but you don't have to give up either. Okay. I just so wanted you to know that about me. He might talk back, but I love how Steve is always down to let me boss him around in the kitchen. After smothering these fillets in the aioli, we're folding them back up and coating them in breadcrumbs to bake. We're baking them at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes and then broiling till brown. Cam is taking apart the lobster tails and saving all the shells for me to make a broth to use for my lobster bisque. Onions, carrots, and celery are known as the mirepoix. I'm sauteing that, adding tomato paste and some white wine. Now I'm adding the lobster broth and just one spoon of sugar will really bring out the sweetness of that lobster. After simmering until all the veggies are soft, I'm gonna have Steve puree the soup until it's smooth. Be careful. Blending stuff that's hot can turn to a disaster. Like if you don't put your lid on good or if you fill it up too much. All right, mom. Now it's back on the stove and being finished with cream. Cam is sauteing chunks of lobster tail in butter and garlic. We're adding the big chunks to our bisque, and I'm using the rest to make lobster grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh, there you go. Oh, look at that beautiful light coming in. And I absolutely have to cut a plate of that yellow jack sashimi because that meat just looks too good. This soup and sandwich combo is my ocean upgrade to the classic grilled cheese and tomato soup. So are we dipping this? You, however bisque? you eat it, I, I'm a dipper. Oh yeah. Is it good? Mm -hmm. so, That's excellent. It's like cold weather food, a very yeah. hot day. <laughs> what, is it, if, what thing would you take away that would make it cease to be a bisque? Cream? If you take cream away, it's, I don't believe that. Well, look it up. You think that cream is what makes a bisque a bisque? That is exactly my guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe, that maybe, clam, maybe. That clam chowder a bisque. No, no, no. I didn't say that anything <laughs> with cream is a bisque. I just said if you took the cream away, I don't know if you could still call it mm. a bisque. 
I think there might be more than one component, but I would guess the components would be like something parade with finished whipped cream. Hmm. It's good. This is a different reason. I'm exceptionally happy that Chester loves the baked hogfish. What do you think of hogfish? That's good stuff. Man. Different, huh? I never had it like this. I mean, I dig the lobsters, but I, like, you know, I still like it drowned in that stuff. You mm -hmm. know? Like, I like I'm a sauce person. Like there, There's something so satisfying about eating food this fresh while reflecting on how hard you worked for it. I was, we did improve. You guys did improve. So I think one of the big draws of this sport is no matter how good you get, like you can always learn from every single situation and no situation is exactly the same again. You know, the labor of love of the sport is like, you can never be perfect at it, mm -hmm. no matter how good you get. Oh yeah. Like it's all these little, almost seemingly like insignificant tips that you give that every time I have ever gone diving with you, it's those things that like stick with me. Really? Oh my God, so much. Huh. Like, but you have made me such a better diver. Really? Oh, 100%. And that's what I love about your guiding. It's not just like, okay, I'm gonna put them on a fish and they're gonna get it and they're gonna be happy, but like whether or not you know it, like you you make anyone that you swim with that pays attention like a better diver. That's cool. For yeah. sure. You have a good game on it. Like I always think about like spotting animals, you know, like, I take a lot of pride in being able to spot animals, but holy shit. Spotting and identifying fish is just like I'm like I'm always like, well there that's an enticing looking fish. No, and you're like, <laughs> I'm gonna try some fish identification and sometimes I'll start doing my own thing and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna find find my own. But it's like what are you doing? Just go hang out with Cam. <laughs> like that's gonna be way more productive. And it'd be more Cam's right. My favorite part of diving is the learning process. And the learning process never stops as the ocean is forever changing. But traveling has a way of making me a beginner all over again. And I absolutely love that. That's why I seek out far away waters, fish, and friends. Because learning is what keeps my passion alive.